Lady that prayed bo shake it just begin to pray in the spirit right now pray in the spirit pray in the spirit i can feel the presence of god pray in the spirit pray de bo shake it bo send le ria bagaria bazo bolo ye pray brada bo so goria bara bara de de bro de bo shake it ya maria de bo shake it ye brada ba shake it ra bo sirire pray brada bo shake it we thank you lord jesus
that this morning. Let's sing it out. You're never gonna, no, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna, you're never gonna let me down. Let's sing it out. the healing place. These are ordinary people that believe that we can do extraordinary things because we know an extraordinary God. We're a people that believe in the God that raises the dead, that calls those things that are not as though they are. Somebody yesterday did not get let down. We just finished praying for a lady and we had a little downtime, so we're just kicking back in one of the prayer rooms. Heather got a text that her auntie was in the hospital. 
facing a serious situation. And so we went into a mode of calling forth those things that are not as though they are. So we had Heather sit down in the chair. We're going to pray a proxy thing. We believe that God is not limited to geographic areas. And so we waited upon the Holy Spirit. And we, we came against the, the symptoms, the cause of what was going on with Rachel. We bound that. We commanded that everything was bowed to the name of Jesus. And then the Lord began to show us how he was going to do this. And so this is really interesting. I'm going to lay this out because Rachel's going to come and share kind of the parallel journey that she experienced first we commanded the organ that was being attacked to come into alignment with the atoning work of Jesus on the cross and we commanded that the stones be dissolved in Jesus name we saw those stones being dissolved in Jesus name and then we and then we we commanded that there will be no operation and that they will redo a test again and the test will come up clean. So as Paul Harvey used to say, Rachel, the rest of the story. Okay, so um, Wednesday night, I, the pain actually started Monday, um, but by Wednesday I was, I had had enough. So um, after David got home from baseball practice with Mason, I said, you know what, I got to do something. I figured there was an ulcer, but I'd had him before. So I thought, I'm just going to go up to Summit. I'm going to get some medicine, get this taken care of. Um, so I drove up there, got there, and um, they got me in right away. And I said, they said, we're going to do a CT scan. I said, okay. So they took me in, did a CT scan. and. Um, a little while later, she comes. the doctor comes back and says, you have an infection in your gallbladder and it's swelling and we're going to take it out. And I said, no, you're not. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, you're going to give me some pain medicine and you're gonna, I'm going to sign myself out. And she just kind of looked at me like, okay. <laughs> um, and so they gave me the pain meds, sent me home with some antibiotics and I left. And um, I was fine because the pain medicine lasted until Friday. And then Friday evening, um, I was awake all night in pain. And so by Saturday morning, I texted my mom and I said, I gotta get to the hospital. I gotta do something. I gotta get this either out or we gotta do something. So we prayed about it and decided that I should go to Grace Harbor. So we went to Grace, I went to Grace Harbor and I told them the situation and um, they said, well, we're gonna do an ultrasound on this and really thoroughly look at this. And I said, okay, so they did an ultrasound and as I'm waiting for the results, I felt like the pain started going away. Cause I went in there with like about a four or five pain. And I was like, wow, this is really, I'm, not, I'm starting to really feel better. And I had no idea that they were praying at the church. I just had texted Heather and told her what was going on. And so then they came back and I, my pain was gone by the time they came back. And they said, you have no infection. You have no swelling. There's gallbladder stones, but they are dissolving and they're going away. You are fine. You need no operation. Praise Jesus. So, you see, we're a people that have faith in the name of Jesus. By faith in the name of Jesus that has made this lady well. And that we believe in the God that heals. Jesus says, if you believe in me, you will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, we didn't physically lay hands on her. We laid hands on Heather. That's the power of God. Our God is not limited. It's faith. It's faith. It's ordinary people doing extraordinary things because we know an extraordinary God. This is just the beginning, the beginning. This is the first fruits of what God is going to start releasing. Are we ready for this? There's more. There's more to come because our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. My favorite part about the story is the specific things we had prayed for specifically happened very, very specifically in the name of Jesus. So come on, let's give God one more hand.
think we just need to give a shout of praise to the Lord for all the goodness that he's done. Come on, lift him up. Woo! It's not going to lift. 
and, and George Miller said, my God is bigger than the fog. And my God said, we're getting to my destination. He went to the front of the ship and he commanded the fog to lift. It lifted and moved and he got there on time. And I want you to have faith today that you're going somewhere in God. You need to believe that whatever the obstructions are, whatever you see in the natural, that you needn't look at those things, but you look at the Lord your God. He's able to change every situation. Right now, if you've got a situation, I want you to kind of move to the aisle. If you've got something, you feel you're in that fog, you need some prayer. I, I'm going to ask my prayer team to go pray for you. Right now, if you feel, if you've got pain, if you've got some situation, if you're saying, oh, I, I can't see where I'm going to get to, there's a few people in the aisles. Uh, you, prayer team, you know who you are. Go pray for them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over all the plans of the enemy that are trying to hinder people, slow people down, who are trying to discourage people. I command all sickness and pain and disease in this place to leave in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you heal all our diseases. You set the captives free. Greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. No weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon. I said no weapon. No weapon. Nothing the enemy is doing. Nothing the enemy is trying. Nothing the plans of the enemy are trying to go against your life. We cancel those things in the name of Jesus. Every obstruction right now. There's something right here the Lord's doing in your situation, Simon. There's, he's moving things. He's moving obstructions. Don't give up. Don't get discouraged. Don't go and say, I can't go forward because God's there. He's moving it. He's moving right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord. There's more and more, more and more miracles. Let's just keep worshiping. God's moving in this place. His presence is in this place. His anointing is in this place. Thank you, Jesus.
that is happening right now, worldwide. God's prophets are saying this move of the Holy Spirit, this move of God, is going to take place amongst God's people. It's not going to be led by pastors. It's going to be led by the people of God, hungry for the purposes of God, hungry for the presence of God. People like each and every one of us in this room, more should be happening, listen carefully, more should be happening between Sundays than actually happens on Sundays. As the church is mobilized to be the church in the region that God has placed the church, and God is raising up a powerful church in Grays Harbor. And we get to be a part of that. We're not the only body or family, but we are desiring to be in the middle of what God wants to do in Grace Harbor. This is so amazing, so exciting. These miracles of Jose and Rachel and all of that is it's just the beginning. It's like Dave was saying, the first fruits, the, the, the very beginning of what God wants to release in this region. So much is going to happen, we won't have time in a meeting like this to actually hear every story because it's going to be so widespread. Aren't you excited? Come on, give Jesus an applaud this morning. Awesome. I want you to go ahead and be seated if you would this day. A um, couple things I do want to share with you. First of all, it is Father's Day. And we want to honor every father, every grandfather, every man of God in this place. And to do so, we have a gift for each one of you this morning. And before you leave, you need to pick yours up. Paul has a goodly supply of those back there. And we want you to have that as our gift to you. Living by faith. That's a, that's a good way to, to do this journey. And then, fathers, inside the program you received this morning, there's a Father's Day challenge. I, I challenge you to take the challenge. And so do that before day's end, all right? Now, a couple community things that are happening this week. I need to remind you of those. First of all, on Thursday of this week, uh, there is an effort being made uh, to um, uh, sow into the lives of children. And there's going to be a huge giveaway of books Prizes, gifts, games, Thursday night from 5 to 7. We have these handouts on the table in the foyer of the church. They're both in English and in Spanish. So avail yourself to those. That is an amazing thing. And then one other community thing that's going on this week is the Grays Harbor Foursquare Church in Central Park is conducting a vacation Bible school that's based on Ken Ham's Creation Museum. You got to get your kids to that week event. That's going to be powerful, and I encourage you to get involved with that. Speaking of something really special, I've been waiting for this for a long, long, long time. The Saturday is this Saturday, and it's our worship event with Morgan from Bethel Church in Redding, California. We're expecting a full house. We're expecting people from all over, not only this Grace Harbor region, but there will be people from uh, outlying areas. And we are hosting this event to bless Grace Harbor to bless the people of God, to usher in the presence of Jesus, and amazing things are going to take place. Well, let me break it down for you. Starting at 5 o'clock 
this Saturday afternoon, uh, there is going to be a pre-event interchurch mixer. And there's going to be food and fellowship, snacks in the fireside room. You need to get here for that because you're the host church. And you're going to be the ones that are going to be greeting all the guests. So it starts at 5 o'clock for you. So I'd get here before 5 o'clock and uh, be a uh, wonderful host because we're going to welcome people from all churches of Grays Harbor. And then the event starts at 6 o'clock. This is not the weekend, hear me now. This is not the weekend to take a road trip. I don't care how nice the weather is, this is not road trip weekend, all right? This is a weekend to gather with the people of God and I want you to invite folks. Our ushers have a goodly supply of um, invites, both to the mixer and to the event. I want you to take a reasonable amount of these invites because after this week, they're not going to be of any value because they're dated for Saturday. So I want you to take a goodly supply because you know people that should be here. And I want you to invite those people so that there will be not only people gathered here, but it'll be standing room only as God's people worship the Lord. This place is going to be full. It's going to be a heavy anointing of God's presence in this room. And you're going to be changed in the presence of God. How many know one night with the king changes everything? Tony Tenney wrote that book, and uh, One Night with the King, King Jesus. It's the story of Esther, how one night with the king changed her life, changed the nation. How many know one night with the king will change you? It could change Grace Harbor. And so that is so significant, so important. So take one of these or more of these and invite people to gather with us here next Saturday. So when do we start? Come on, church. Five o'clock is when the mixer starts. That's when you're here. All right. What time for the event with Morgan? Six o'clock. Okay, we got it. So let's get with the program. And I know that you're going to be blessed. Others will be as well. Now is a time for us to worship the Lord in giving. And you can do that, giving your tithes and offerings. You can place your gifts in the offering reception basket, which is in the foyer of the church. And secondly, you can give online. You can give by way of texting, or you can actually mail your gifts in. I do want to emphasize that uh, in the month of August, Joel Chooks is going to be going to Africa, and he has brochures in the uh, back part of the church to uh, actually do an amazing crusade in Ivory Coast. And uh, you can be a part of support to that. So take that brochure, look it over, see how God wants you to support this outreach in that part of the world through Joel and, uh, and uh, as he goes to uh, serve our God in that area. So. Those are some giving opportunities. The slide's going to remain on this screen, and I'm going to share with you a message in just a moment. Can I say something further about this up and coming weekend? I, I really believe that this is gonna be this weekend with Morgan and the worship event 
in the body of Christ in Grace Harbor. It's going to be one of the more impacting weekends for our church in this calendar year of 2022. Worship. I want to talk to you about worship this morning. Because worship, as we draw ourselves into the presence of God, is a life-changing moment. And for us this weekend, many, this will be life-changing. And today I want us to prepare ourselves for our moment in time as we gather this Saturday. This is a preparatory message to prepare the house for what God wants to do in our lives less than a week from now. And by the way, we get to have Morgan with us next Sunday morning as well. So wow, what a spillover that's going to be. It's going to be an amazing weekend, and we get to just revel in the presence of God. One of the most important messages that God has given to mankind is found in what we know to be the Ten Commandments. This Decalogue, or Ten Commandments, to properly be understood, we need to grasp the general makeup of these ten statements. Can I say in the offset this morning, the first four commandments are instructions on how we humans should relate to God. The next six commandments are about how we humans should relate to each other. So if you get that idea in your mind, the first four, how we ought to relate to God, and the other six, and how we relate to each other, it'll help us in breaking down these Ten Commandments. Primarily, though, this morning, we're going to focus on the first segment. The first four commands are instructions to us by saying, do not worship other gods. That's what God has said to us as a people. Many believe the first command is the most important of all these ten. So turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20. I'm going to look at two verses, verses 4 and verse number 5. I'm going to read to you out of the English Standard Version. And I hope you see this as your, your time of preparation for what God wants to accomplish, not only in you, in this house, and, and church, can I say this, in our region. When God brings a man of God with a level of anointing that Morgan carries, there is a deposit that's left in a region. God wants to change this region. How serious are you about that very fact? So let's look into God's word. Scripture says you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. The statement's clear. Look what it says. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. I want to start out of the gate by saying, when we allow anything to accumulate on the table of our hearts and minds, you know what I mean by our table. When we allow things to accumulate And it is not 
God honoring. In other words, when we place things on our table in a worshipful way, it becomes a major problem for us as a people. But sweeping all those things off the table so only the Lord remains, the object of our worship, this aligns us with the ultimate and eternal reality for which we've been created. God being the center of our attention is the essence of our worship. The second commandment reminds us we have a tendency to create idols and false gods. It's easy for man to go there. It says again, let me remind you, you shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. Creating an idol isn't just carving or molding an image. Because you could say in your mind, you know, I, I don't do things like that. I don't, I don't carve something and put it in my house or in my car or anywhere like that. But I want you to stretch your thinking a little bit. More often, it's placing God-like values on something that can't possibly accomplish what only God can do. And when we put value on other things, that's where we find ourselves getting into some kind of problems or trouble. The warning in this commandment is one of the reasons why we come to church. Did you get that? That's to sweep our idols off of our table. We come weekly and we gather in the house of the Lord and we get a reset or a shift in our thinking. We get our minds from the things of this world and we get our hearts and minds wrapped around the God who we love. We are reminded weekly about the worldly dust that we've accumulated. I say a lot of times the natural condition of a garden is weeds, don't I? But have you ever walked around your home and when the light is right, seen a layer of dust gathering on your stuff. Am I talking to the right people? Where did this dust come from? I don't know. It's a product of the fall, maybe. I don't, I don't know. But dust accumulates, just like you and I go through a week and we gather stuff in our life, when we gather in the house of the Lord and we're in the presence of God, we're been mindful of what needs to be swept off our table. So, what are the things that most often competes for our worship? There were a hundred people who were asked this question. And I want to give you the top five answers. Would you be interested what the top five answers are to the question? What most competes for our worship? So I have to admit this morning, this is not a product of my own ingenuity, okay? I have a hundred backers here who have taken the test and they have shared with us the results. Here are the 
five top answers to that question. I, I want to start with answer number five. Can we work from five to one? Okay, so number five, competition for worship to God. Are you sitting down? Are you braced for this? Can you handle it? It's our families. Our families compete for worship of God. Listen, we can let our children or our spouses get in the place of God if we're not careful. Which is why they can never become before God. If we make them more important than the Lord, we have now failed in the very thing that God has called us to model for them. So dads, on Father's Day this morning, model before your household the primacy of God in your life. God needs to be number one. Let's get that established. Okay, that's number five. I'm going to give you number four. The fourth thing that competes for our worship is money. As they say in Ukraine, Horoshi, money and possessions our toys. We easily worship things instead of God. We live in America, church. America is known for gathering toys. Our backyards can't hold all the toys that we've gathered. Jesus said it this way. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. For where your treasure is, come on, church. He said, that's where your heart will be also. When we worship God, we treasure him. And we recognize his worth. But... If we set our hearts on our treasure, that being our money and our possessions, it displaces God and we are in deep, deep trouble. So, the group of 100, I can blame them. And I cannot be accused of meddling. So, the group of 100 tell us the fifth competition for worship to God are our families. Number four, our money and our possessions are competition for worship of God. I'm going to give you number three. Celebrities, sports figures. We worship people when we think, oh, if I only could be like him or them. Now you recognize the convincing accuracy of a television program named American Idol. Sorry to break it to you. People worshiping other people, and you don't want to go there. You really don't want to go there. The second place for competition in our worship are our careers and the things that we have accomplished. The further you go down the path of life and accomplished great things and done things, 
the greater the, the competition that exists. It's easy to allow these fragile and temporal achievements to give our life meaning and significance. And these take the place of the very qualities that only God can supply to us. And to occupy as the center of our worship. And these can gobble up a lot of you, a lot of your time, and a lot of your energy. Now, are you ready for the number one? I've given you four so far. This is the biggie. The number one reason or thing that competes with worship to God. Number one, ourselves. We are our biggest problem. Let me help you understand that. How often do your needs and your wants become your highest pursuit? When we don't allow anyone, not even God, to get in the way of what we desire, we're worshiping the idol in the mirror. And we become our biggest problem. The discipline of worship is a deliberate act. And when we sweep our hearts clean and remove all the false gods who claim our worship. We gather with others in the house of God and in his presence. It's here where we ask the Lord to take away every worthless thing that would crowd out his rightful place. And this is worship at its best. And I want to challenge you this morning to come to the place of worship with a clean heart, a clean heart, clean hands, as sometimes it's put, clean, pure motives to worship him. We've got a few days to prep for the upcoming weekend, not only Saturday, but Sunday morning as well. And who knows what God's going to do in your heart, a deep, deep work as you honor him and glorify him because it is where God shows up in his glory. Do you know what, church? I really believe there is a God who wants to show up. There's going to be no agenda Saturday night, we're just going to gather and worship. No preaching, unless God changes it, but there's nothing planned along that line. It's just going to be us and Jesus. And a gifted worship leader who is skilled in taking the people of God into the presence of God. It's amazing that God's allowing us to touch vehicles of this measure. So you could, you could be praying and prepping all week long. How about even fasting a meal or doing whatever is necessary for you to see that God would show up when his people praise him. Do you know what I would like to see? I'm just telling you. We've invited churches all through the harbor. I, I really don't know what the response will be. But for those that get here, I would love to see such a, a rich anointing that would rest on the house 
that it would spill over on other worship team participants, other members of other congregations. And when they go to their church on Sunday, I mean, revival will break out. How many know that's the heart of God? And what else I'd like to know, I, 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 it's maybe the little quirkiness in me, so much so that pastors wouldn't know what to do with it. How about that, huh? How about that? God moving in Grace Harbor. His presence spilling everywhere. But we got to come to a place to realize there are barriers to our worship. And our greatest problem is, unfortunately, ourselves. So let me ask you, which of these five categories of idols most distracts you from wholehearted worship of God. And what can you do today to change this pattern? So you need to ask the Lord for help. I've meddled long enough and messed around with you. Let the Holy Spirit finish the job, okay? And when you start poking around and you see, oh, it's this area. Can you be, here's my point, can you be transparent enough and honest enough with yourself to admit to somebody, maybe your spouse, maybe a trusted brother or sister in Christ, Look, this is my problem here. Could you stand with me in prayer? Can we get real on this subject and get rid of anything in our heart that is a substitute for God in our life? God alone is worthy of our humble adoration and trusting surrender. And our dependency really needs to be on him and him alone. Not that we're going to sing it right now, but there is a song that we've done in the past that kind of fits the story coming back to the heart of worship, right? Forgive me, Lord, for making it things that I want it to be getting back to the heart of worship. Could you stand with me? And, and, and this is, a, this is a, uh, a Sunday of preparation. Dads, grandfathers, we've tried to honor you today, instilling family values and putting in your hands some quality material that'll help you in the journey. And we salute our dads and our grandpas today for who they are and their godly lives. But we're on the precipice, on the edge of an amazing summer in God. We're gonna see miracles just happening left, right, and center as we embrace the ways of God. So would you this morning just open your heart and even lift your hands to God and say, Lord, I just want to be honest before you. I don't want my, my worship to be distracted. These few things that we've looked at, we've easily seen can be a barrier. So let's, let's just talk to the Lord right now. Lord, we just give ourselves to you. And we want absolutely nothing, nothing to interfere, to stop, 
cast a, cast a wet blanket over our worship of you. So on this Sunday of heart preparation, we're asking, Lord, that we'd identify for us things that we need to deal with things that you're speaking to us about so we can see an amazing move of God in Grace Harbor. I'm asking that you would anoint Morgan all week long as he soaks up your presence and he comes to be with us this forthcoming weekend. I'm asking you would anoint our worship team as they assemble together and bring themselves into a place of hearing your voice. I'm asking, Lord, for the house, that you would have prepped the house, that you'd anoint the people of God, that the presence of God will be so strong in the house that like it was spoken in Scripture, the priests could not stand to worship because the anointing fell so great upon the people. So our hearts are longing for you, Lord. Our hearts are crying out for more of you. There's nobody that's got the full measure of what you have for us. So there's always more, and we want more of you your presence. Not so we feel full necessarily, but that we will be equipped and anointed of you as unusual, uncharacteristic uh, people. People who are not ordinary people, but the people of the Holy God. God of this universe representing you. So descend in us, Holy Spirit. Show us in our hearts right now what you're talking to us about as we prep ourselves in your presence. Because the move is coming 
And when the move comes, you've got to be ready to move with it. You've got to be ready to go out and do what the Lord's saying. You've got to have your life right. You've got to have your possessions right. You've got to have your relationships right. You've got to get your home right. You've got to be ready because he's about to move. And he said, watch September. In September, the full force of the move will come. But right now, there's an imminent move of God. An imminent move of God. There's an excitement in the spirit realm. The heavens are ready. The spirit is already moving. And he's going to come to this house. And he gave me that word. And then he said, just tell the people, prepare, I'm coming to move. I feel a little nervous about entering into the ways of God in worship. And um, I just want to address that if I can. We're like the people who want to cross the river and know where the stones are. leading you into a measure of trust. Sometimes there are places where we need to be healed of so we can trust deeply. And if that's you today, our prayer team is here to pray with you to help you get over that hurdle. Because getting over that hurdle is going to get you where you need to be. 
near Jesus. And it doesn't get any better than that. So let's do this. In conclusion, I'm going to invite the, 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 the musician teams um, uh, sang a song earlier, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. I'm going to get them to sing it again. And while we do that, some of you may want to come and just get prayed for. Um, if not, that's fine. Be diligent this week to pre prepare your hearts for an amazing weekend. And dads today, I just want to wish you a wonderful Father's Day. Be sure to take our gift for every guy in this place, we have something for you, okay? So, father or none, you, every guy, you take one of these, all right? Because it'll help you in the journey. But if there's an area where you want somebody to stand with you in prayer, come on, just come right up here. We're going to pray. Other than that, God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank you for being with us. Grow.